Today's talk is on CT scanning of atelectasis, otherwise known as collapse, and consolidation. So in the last 20 years, there's been a vast increase in the number of CT scans being performed, both of the thorax for respiratory complaints, and also including the thorax for abdominal complaints, such as acute abdomens or in post-operative patients. This means we've got a vastly increased number of CT scans of the lungs to review either in full or in part. And one of the things which is a source of frustration is that we're still using the terms collapse and consolidation interchangeably. Now what I want to talk to you about today and try and convince you is that we can tell the difference between these two things and it's well worth attempting to do so. So the aims of the talk it is possible to distinguish collapse and consolidation at CT scanning in a significant number of cases, and I'm going to show you how we can do that. And I also want to emphasize to you it's worth making an effort to do that. So, how do we divide this talk up? Well, first of all, obviously, what are collapse and consolidation? Just to go over that. What are the theoretical imaging signs? What are the causes and treatments? We'll just talk about that briefly. And then finally we'll get into a lot of pictures because that's what radiology is all about. So what is consolidation? It's a pacification of the alveoli when they fill with something other than air. Normally there are millions of alveoli in the lungs and they are filled with air. The air is black, therefore they show up as black on chest x-rays and CT scans. When we introduce a substance such as blood, pus, tumour or water, and that's the cause of consolidation in 99% of cases, then the alveoli which were formerly black will now turn white. And generally speaking, that produces an irregular white blob on the chest x-ray or CT scan. So we might get blood as the cause in a patient who's had a pulmonary contusion where there's bleeding into the alveoli, pus if the patient has pneumonia and neutrophils and other acute inflammatory reactants have gone in there. Some tumours do spread through the alveoli, the most common examples being bronchoalveolar carcinoma, breast cancer metastases, lymphoma and renal cell carcinoma, renal cell carcinoma metastases. There's a very characteristic presentation of lymphoma where the consolidation extends in a peribronchial pattern um, radiating away from the hyla. How do we have water in the lungs? Well, the most common cause of having fluid within the lungs is um, pulmonary edema from heart failure. Pulmonary edema from heart failure um, is caused by raised left atrial pressure as the heart is unable to manage to pump away the volume it's receiving due to the failure of the heart. That results in increased left atrial pressure increased interstitial pressure, fluid begins to spill into the interstitial spaces that causes interstitial pulmonary edema and then if the pressure continues to increase fluid will spill into the alveoli so we will get uh, fluid in the alveoli, water in the alveoli or pulmonary edema from heart failure. Atelectasis collapse, what's the difference between these two? Well I don't know that there is a difference but I think there's a general feeling in the reporting community that atelectasis is a small version of collapse. Atelectasis and collapse are where the alveolar spaces are deflated down to little or no volume. So what can the, what can the cause of this be? It could be due to luminal occlusion. So the classic example would be a peanut or a an endobronchial carcinoma upstream of the area of atelectasis. That does lead to failure to aerate the alveoli, um, so new air can't get in. It's possible there's a ball valve effect so that air can leave and not return, and eventually due to collateral air drift at the um, at the alveolar level, uh, sorry, at the terminal airway level, Will air will be lost to adjacent pieces of lung tissue and not replaced, leading to collapse. External compression is obviously 
a cause of collapse, something like lymph nodes might press on the airways, occluding them. So it's not that we might get absolutely nothing in the alveoli spa alveolar spaces, we'll probably always get at least a little bit of mucus. So the alveolar spaces will still be visual, visualized, but, and they will be white, but the difference is there'll be less volume here. Also, the pattern will not be irregular as we expect the lung to collapse in a rather smooth and regular manner. So, the main reason why I want to emphasize to you that it's really important to try and tell the difference between collapse and consolidation is because the treatments are different. If, the, if there was no treatment difference between the two, there wouldn't be any point in distinguishing between them. We've seen the causes of consolidation. If a patient has pneumonia, if we, if we say that a patient has consolidation, the clinician will perhaps think that they have pneumonia and we want to give them antibiotics. If we think that a patient has, alve has consolidation due to alveolar pulmonary edema, the clinician may wish to give them diuretics. If we think that there's a tumor causing the consolidation, the patient may wish to, sorry, the clinician may wish to perform follow-up imaging to make sure that consolidation resolves in case it is a tumor, and also the patient may need chemotherapy. At lexis, we certainly do want to treat the underlying cause, so there may be an obstructing upstream tumor or a peanut or other foreign body which needs to be removed, but there's also more, if you like, perhaps general or mundane measures which are very important in the treatment of atelectasis. Those would include chest physiotherapy to remove mucus plugs, pain relief, and um, that's very important in post-operative patients where uh, the pain in the surgical wound stops them breathing, um, stops them from aerating all of the air spaces, so those air spaces gradually collapse down. Very important to get pain relief to keep their airways open so they remain oxygenated and don't develop secondary pneumonia and also bronchoscopy might be necessary. So if there's a patient in the intensive care unit and there's an area on their CT scan, it's very important we tell if that's consolidation, which might require antibiotic treatment, or a collapsed portion of lung, which might require chest physiotherapy or bronchoscopy to remove a, to remove a mucus plug. So this perhaps gives you some idea of uh, why we should endeavor and really strive where we can to tell the difference between these two. And this slide really is just um, emphasizing that the causes and treatments are distinct, so we should attempt to uh, separate the two. And um, one thing which is very important, in addition to trying to make a positive diagnosis of collapse or consolidation, we should also, like any other process in radiology, try not to diagnose it when it's not present. False positives um, are a major cause of morbidity, and um, so uh, let's not diagnose things which aren't there. So what are the findings in consolidation at imaging? As we already mentioned, we'll be looking for a pacification. A pacification means the area goes white. The volume should be preserved, as we also mentioned. The margins of the um, area of a pacification should be irregular as a general rule. That applies in most cases of consolidation. We've all heard of low bar pneumonia. That's where the consolidation is so severe that it takes up an entire lobe. And in that case, where it outlines a fissure, um, it certainly will have a smooth border there. But it's quite rare to see low bar consolidation these days because most, patient will, most patients will have had some antibiotic treatment in the community which will um, partially abort that process. And also, we can see that although one margin of the pneumonia may be smooth due to um, meeting a fissure, the other margin will almost always be irregular. So air bronchograms, these are, um, everybody knows that these are the cardinal sign of consolidation. What is an air bronchogram? The small airways 
in the lung are not visible, not usually visualized at CT or at chest X-ray. This is because they are filled with air and they are black. The alveoli are filled with air and they are also black. Therefore, we cannot see the black airways on a background of black alveoli. However, when consolidation occurs and the alveoli become white due to opacification, the small airways remain black as there is continued air movement in this area. We can therefore see air bronchograms, which are the sort of photographic negative of a bronchus filled with air against a white background of consolidation. I was always taught that air bronchograms were more or less diagnostic of consolidation. That's possibly because um, I was taught in the era where CT scanning wasn't being performed very uh, often. Um, but as we've been performing more and more CT, I think we can also realize that air bronchograms are also seen in atelectasis. What can help to distinguish between them is that the air bronchograms in consolidation are somewhat spaced apart, while the air bronchograms in atelectasis are clustered. That's due to the fact that the opacification which occurs in atelectasis causes volume loss and will bring the smaller airways together. This of course is not perfect and there is a certain degree of overlap, but I think it's a useful sign. In, in determining consolidation, we also have to look for an appropriate background process. So, for example, if our airway opacification, which we think is consolidation, has a perihilar distribution and has associated features of cardiac failure, then we would conclude that it is likely to be due to alveolar consolidation from pulmonary edema rather than atelectasis. So, the associated background processes can help us in determining that, although they unfortunately can also be a hindrance because when we're given clinical information we might be um, pushed into making a diagnosis that we don't necessarily want to do. So uh, if a patient is in a road traffic accident and a sustained chest trauma we might feel pressured into making a diagnosis of pulmonary contusion where it's not always there. So we have to uh, bear that in mind but certainly, looking for associated background processes on the imaging is very useful. What findings do we have in atelectasis? We also have a pacification, but in this case, we hopefully will see some volume loss. The margins will have a smooth, uh, will be smooth, and we will see air bronchograms, which, as I said before, are hopefully going to be clustered. We may see a background process such as a peanut in the bronchus. That would be very useful, but of course that doesn't occur in the majority of cases. I think the most helpful process which I can background process which I can suggest in atelectasis is the characteristic position. So just like perihilar opacification is likely to be due to um alveolar pulmonary edema, if it's in a bat wing configuration around the hilar areas, when we see um, a process symmetrically at the lung bases, then that's a very characteristic location for atelectasis. And I think we'll touch on that perhaps as we go through some of the cases. So just quickly to summarize here, there's significant overlap between these. Um, but it's not as significant as um, I think perhaps some people consider. It doesn't mean we should give up and use the terms interchangeably or use them together. And because of the significant treatment differences between these two conditions, we really have to strive and distinguish them on, um, on all occasions. So that's the end of part one. And um, in part two, we'll get started with looking at some pictures.